Hi, I am the rules lawyer, and today I'm going to give an introduction to the Makers class, which is one of the two new classes that will be coming out in Secrets of Magic, uh, which will be released on PDF uh, this Wednesday. Uh, Secrets of Magic uh, has two new classes, the Magus and the Summoner. I'll be going over the Magus because uh, one, people are looking for previews of it, and two, uh, I think of all the classes in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, it most highlights the fun that you can have that with the three-action economy, which uh, makes all classes more fun. And so I think it's a great demonstration of the fun you can have with Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, my name is Ronald. I am the rules lawyer. I am a lawyer, and I teach and run tabletop role-playing games for kids. And I make these videos to uh, provide uh, resources for the community to learn and popularize Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So um, our um, Magus is a often called a Gish class because he mixes fighting weapons uh, and using uh, magic spells. So as you can see, this, uh, this is Celtiel uh, in the center of this picture with the flame coming out of his hand. Um, uh, and he, we will be using Celtiel in our uh, sample um, combat. Um, I'll actually end the video with a short combat demonstration. Um, I'm going to spend be, be spending most of this video giving first a quick overview of the three action economy and uh, then going over what Omegas can do. So the three action economy is very uh, simple um, to wrap your head around. You get three actions per turn, uh, many common actions such as moving up to your speed, take one action, this is called stride. Uh, another common action is to make an attack with your weapon or with your unarmed strike, and that is called strike. And you can do these things in any order um, and do the same thing multiple times. Celtiel, if he were to walk up or stride to the zombie, could make a strike with his great sword, and then make a second strike with his great sword. Um, Pathfinder Second Edition uh, disincentivizes making multiple attacks uh, because each subsequent attack is less and less accurate. So the second attack would have a minus five penalty. So perhaps Celtiel would want to walk up, strike, and then stride away forcing the enemies to use their three actions to um, spend one of them to walk up to him. So uh, that's uh, something uh, that any class can do. Uh, Celtiel as a magus also has access to the wizard spell list, uh, also called the arcane spell list. And Celtiel um, has some basic cantrips, just like in D&D 5th edition, uh, cantrips can be cast uh, without limitation um, multiple times. And so uh, Celtiel, on, in, he walks into a crypt and finds two skeletons and a zombie. Celtiel can start by casting an offensive spell, such as telekinetic projectile, um, finding an object that uh, and striking, um, hitting the zombie with it having to make a spell attack roll, and he can choose any uh, an object that does bludgeoning damage, piercing, or slashing damage. That's just one cantrip. And then another cantrip is called Acid Splash, which uh, does uh, uh, acid damage and also splashes um, acid onto the main target and all creatures uh, uh, within five feet of it. So uh, that's another option. Those each ca use two actions, so he could cast one of those spells and then walk up to a zombie, or walk around the corner and force them to chase him. Um, another spell uh, is called Shield, and, um, oh, I don't want Celtiel to get bloody here. Um, shield only requires one action to cast, and it puts up a magical force and increases his armor class by one until the start of his next turn. And if damage were to come in, uh, he could uh, reduce the incoming damage by using Shield Block, uh, a feature of this spell. So uh, he could do that, which only takes one action, and then go forward and make his strike. Or he can cast Shield, 
um, and uh, because it only takes one action, he still has two left and can cast Telekinetic Projectile. Uh, so as you can see, there's already a, a huge variety of things that you can do. The Amagus has some class features that are unavailable to other classes. So um, the first thing we'll demonstrate is uh, Celtiel will walk up and walk up to the zombie and he will cast what's called a Conflux spell. A Conflux spell is a type of focus spell. Uh, there are certain classes, uh, well, so some characters in the game who uh, have a focus point pool, which is usually one point at first level, uh, which is a limited resource, which lets them uh, use certain abilities um, by spending a point in it. And once you've spent that point, you can get it back if you refocus for 10 minutes outside of combat. So uh, as a level one Magus, um, he'll, he has one focus point to cast a Conflux spell. So he's going to cast, um, because he is a, he chose one of five hybrid studies uh, called Inexorable Iron, which focuses on fighting with a two-handed weapon. His Conflux spell will be Thunderous Strike. So he walks up, casts Thunderous Strike, um, which lets him make a melee uh, swing melee strike so he's going to attack the zombie with his great sword and in addition whether or not that hits he will do um he will send forth a 15 foot cone of sonic energy that will um uh include his his uh, weapon target and every creature within that cone will have to do a fortitude saving throw uh, against two sonic damage and if they critically fail, which in Pathfinder 2nd Edition happens if they, if their saving throw is 10 or more less than the target number, then they take double damage and they fall prone. So he has this Conflux spell, and depending on which hybrid study you choose, you get a different Conflux spell. Then um, with his third action, he will use another class feature. Because he has just cast a spell, he gets to divert the energies from the spell he just cast to uh, enter to go into a fighting stance that uh, incorporates the the energy from his spell, and this is called Arcane Cascade. So, if his spell did a type of damage, from now on, his um, his weapon strikes will now do an additional point of damage, <clears throat> um, which is, will be the same type of damage that his spell dealt. So his spell just did sonic damage. So while he's in this stance, which could, will likely be for the rest of the combat, he will do plus one sonic damage um, with any strike that he does in the combat. An additional, um, every hybrid study also gives an additional, well, most of them give an additional bonus, uh, bonus effect when you enter your Arcane Cascade uh, stance. And for his stance, he immediately gains one temporary hit point. And every time he starts his turn while in the stance, he gets one temporary hit point. Um, so it's a little, um, a little, uh, uh, barrier of, of damage uh, against the damage so yep uh, if he he can do that um, enter arcane cascade after any spell that he casts so he could have uh, decided at the start of his turn to uh, cast a uh, shield uh, and then um, uh, do arcades arcane stance after casting shield and because shield does not deal damage um we the type of damage the extra damage that arcane cascade would give you is determined by the school of the spell and shield is an abjuration spell i believe and so it would be force damage um on all of his strikes um he could see the skeleton guard and and think to himself from past experience oh a uh, skeleton uh, bludgeoning damage is particularly effective against it. And he has a slashing weapon with his greatsword. So what he could do 
is uh, cast Telekinetic Projectile against the zombie on his turn, and then enter an Arcane Cascade that will add bludgeoning damage uh, to all of his strikes for the rest of this combat. So um, with if he, he could do Acid Splash and then enter Car Arcane Cascade and add plus one Acid Damage to all of his strikes. He could even change his Arcane Cascade uh, in the middle of combat. Uh, let's say he uh, adds Bludgeoning Damage to his strikes and defeats the Skeleton, and then there's something else that's weak to Acid. He could cast Acid Splash and do Arcane Cascade um, to add plus one Acid Damage instead to his strikes. So it, it gives a lot of versatility to the kinds of damage that um, he can do and would inform his spell selection, actually. So I haven't even gotten to the main signature class feature of the Magus, which is Spell Strike, where uh, they spend, he spends, he's going to stride up to the Zombie Shambler and then spend two actions to do Spell Strike. What Spell Strike is, is he makes an attack with his weapon or an unarmed strike, um, but he's going to be casting a spell that ta uses one or two actions um, and is a spell that has a spell attack roll that is part of it. Um, so his strike, his weapon attack roll, will determine the success of not only his weapon strike, but also his spell. So he'll be using two actions to combine a weapon strike with a spell that can have up to itself two actions. So he can walk up to the zombie shambler and decide to uh, incorporate a telekinetic projectile into his strike and uh, spend two actions, make a weapon swing, and uh, do both slashing damage from his greatsword and also bludgeoning damage from telekinetic projectile or acid damage from acid splash. Uh, so um, and this works with any spell that has a spell attack roll. So let's say he walks forward and does that. On the next turn, uh, it doesn't have um, arcane cascade does not require that your most that your uh, that you just cast a spell that round. It could have been your last action on your previous turn. So he could start the next turn by entering arcane cascade. Um, get that extra damage and the temporary hit point in his case and uh, to uh, uh, to fuel the arcane cascade. Now spell strike seems like a great thing to do. Why don't you do it all the time? Um, well you can't. You can't do it every time you want to. Um, I mean in theory you would think that you could do this and cast a cantrip um, every round but before you can do Spell Strike a second time in a given combat, you have to spend one action to focus yourself and get um, the ability to do Spell Strike back again. Um, or you can cast a Conflicts spell. So, um, Celtiel could, uh, on round two, um, decide to enter Arcane Cascade, then cast... Uh, and get plus one bludgeoning damage, let's say. Then cast his conflict spell and so strike the zombie and then send a thunderous strike forward, uh, a cone of sonic damage. And that would allow him to do spell strike again um, in the future. So uh, you can do all these things in various combinations. Um, and spell strike, you have to replenish with either one action or a conflux spell. So that's uh, the Magus um, in a nutshell. Now we're going to go over the four other hybrid studies which can completely change how you play the class uh, through a simple mechanical change. The next hybrid study is um, Laughing Shadow, where um, this is a style of fighting that um, favors uh, fighting with a one-handed weapon. So let's say um, Celtiel um, is fighting with a long sword, and um, the uh, conflux spell that he would have would be to actually teleport up to half his speed um, as a half elf 
With a 30 foot speed, he could teleport right up to the zombie and make a melee strike, all with one action. And as uh, his arcane cascade um, uh, would allow him, if he were wielding uh, a one handed weapon and his second hand were completely free, his additional damage from arcane cascade would be plus three. So his longsword uh, could have damage comparable to a greatsword while he's in arcane cascade. So, uh, uh, and this teleportation ability, this conflict spell is uh, really great if you want to avoid attacks of opportunity. Like if you're trying to walk up to a scorpion, for example, you could just teleport up um, and make that strike using a conflex spell, um, which could then fuel his arcane cascade. So that conflux spell is called Dimensional Assault. So one turn, first turn, could be Celtiel um, cast Dimensional Assault. He makes a strike against the zombie Shambler. Then his second action is to go into his Arcane Cascade, which additionally uh, gives him a plus five status bonus to speed uh, if he is a Laughing Shadow Magus, plus 10 status bonus to his speed if he is unarmored. And then use that extra speed to get as far away as he can uh, from the enemy. So uh, that's another idea with uh, the Laughing Shadow. The next hybrid study is called Sparkling Targe. And Targe is an old word for shield. So this uh, is a Magus um, that uh, has uh, enhanced defensive ability. So Celtiel uh, could go up um, and... Um, Let's say he has a long sword and a sh physical steel shield in his other hand. His conflux spell is called Shielding Strike, where he makes a strike against the zombie, and with the same single action, he raises his shield and gets, in the case of the steel shield, a plus two bonus to his armor class. Um, but not only that, um, when he um, he also gets the shield block general feat. Um, which allows him to absorb damage into that shield, uh, uh, which is, is, can, be, um, can save your life in this game. Um, defense is, very, uh, is a very important consideration. Uh, but also the Arcane Cascade um, would allow his shield to also not only give him a bonus to his armor class, but also a plus two bonus to his saving throws against all spells and spell effects. And um, he could use his physical shield or the shield cantrip, which I should say too, his conflict spell allows him to also for free cast the shield cantrip. Um, he can use either the physical shield or the shield cantrip to block incoming magical damage. And it's also an increased amount for uh, him and his arcane stance equal to the bonus damage he would get. So uh, th that shield uh, could block six instead of five, and this all scales up. So that's a, a very strong um, uh, defensive uh, uh, build. And the feats for this, um, just as with all the other hybrid studies, just expand on these um, abilities. The next uh, hybrid study is called Starlit Span, which uh, lets you use Spell Strike with a ranged weapon. Now, the Arcane Cascade doesn't have its own abilities, but this is a very, very uh, powerful ability, nevertheless. So, uh, Celtiel could have a uh, short bow and deliver uh, any spell um, with a spell attack roll using a his bow. So, uh, Celtiel could. Uh, and these could be touch spells as well. So chill touch, um, shocking grass could be delivered through the same uh, attack roll that he's using to deliver his arrow. And uh, not only that, if there's uh, many spells have a 30 foot range in Pathfinder Second Edition, um, like with many other um, uh, instances of spell strike, the spell adopts the uh, the ability to reach the target of the weapon strike. So 
um, in Celtiel's case, he could use his short bow um, to deliver um, shock and grasp at a, at a 60 foot range. It has to be within the first, the weapon's first range increment, however. So that is uh, the Starlet Span's main ability. Uh, but they also have a conflux spell called Shooting Star. Uh, it is situational, but very valuable when it comes up. If, say, this zombie shambler is behind cover or benefiting from concealment, say, is in uh, dim light, um, he, uh, Celtiel could cast um, Shooting Star and ignore the concealment and lower the cover by one step and on his strike, but also give that same benefit to all of his allies over the next round. So that's his Conflux spell. And the fifth and last hybrid study is called Twisting Tree, uh, which focuses on fighting with a staff. A staff is a simple weapon, so usually underwhelming um, compared to martial weapons. Um, but uh, uh, Magus's with this fighting style um, get to do a d6 of damage when wielding that staff with one hand instead of d4. Um, and while, in, with, while it's one-handed, it becomes an agile weapon. So their second and third attacks in a round are going to be more accurate. If they hold it with two hands, um, it becomes a reach weapon. They get to attack um, creatures 10 feet away. And they, um, it becomes a um, trip weapon, so they can trip creatures with it. And it also becomes a parry weapon, so they can spend an action to increase their armor class with it. Uh, their Conflux spell is, is um, called Spinning Staff. It's very fun. Uh, Celtiel right now uh, could cast Spinning Staff to do, um, as one action, make two strikes. Um, he could attack the Zombie Shambler with strike number one and attack this guard with strike number two. Um, the second strike would still suffer from the, mul from, from the multiple attack penalty, but um, still it only takes one action and you, you get to have an extra action to do whatever you like. And of course, as a spell, it can power his Arcane Cascade. So, um, oh, and when they enter Arcane Cascade, um, um, Twisting Tree Maguses, they can change their grip on their staff right before their strike and at the end of their uh uh, action. So now we're going to review what we've learned about the Magus uh, through sample combat. Celtiel um, is going to be first in initiative. He uh, sees these undead. Um, he's very worried. Um, this is a lot of enemies for him at first level. And he is going to probably open with um, his Conflux spell to try to take out as many as he can. So he will uh, cast um, spinning tree and make an attack first on the skeleton guard um, because he believes that bludgeoning damage will be more effective against it and he hopes to and he wants uh, he thinks he can kill it so he will um, use his more accurate attack first and the skeleton guard has the benefit of a little cover I see but he will try to make this attack 19 um, that's more than enough to hit and he will do nine damage to the skeleton guard and take it out of the battle. Then with his second strike, um, he will use that same staff. He cannot switch grips yet. He's not an arcane cascade. And do a 19, and he's gonna hit the zombie shambler um, with the second attack. So um, this will do 11 damage. That is, was a very good hit. With his last attack, he is worried about his survivability right now, so he's going to cast Shield and um, increase his armor class by one. So um, he, uh, we now go to the Preppy Skeleton Guard, uh, which will uh, this zombie needs to get in the initiative. So the Preppy Skeleton Guard is going to run up um, and make a strike with a scimitar against him, and a 22 will hit him for four uh, damage. And Celtiel decides not to, sh to shield block it because um, that would make him lose the benefit of its AC for 10 minutes. Um, he won't be able to cast shield again for a while. Uh, the skeleton guard makes a second attack 
and the 16 will miss. Then the impotent skeleton guard is going to run up here uh, and uh, try to attack. Um, a 7 will critically miss, but critical misses on strikes normally don't have a special effect. And then with the second attack, we'll make a claw attack. A 16 will miss. So the zombie shambler, um, being um, a zombie, only has two actions per turn. So it's going to walk up and try to um, do a fist attack against uh, Celtiel and miss. So he was quite lucky. Celtiel starts his next turn. He, um, his last action was to cast shield. So if he enters Car Arcane Cascade now, he will get plus one uh, force damage to his strikes and uh, be able to change his grip um, pretty much for free um, during um, while making a strike. Um, so he will do that. He'll go into Arcane Cascade um, and oh, his uh, shield bonus is ending. And he um, and he's going to cast a new spell that I'm going to reveal um, that is in Secrets of Magic. It's called Gale Blast, where um, fierce winds um, uh, swirl around him uh, from his outstretched hands, and his spell casting bonus, um, his intelligence modifier is three. So they all might take three points of bludgeoning damage, depending on their fortitude save. So the zombie shambler. Um, will try to get a 16 and succeeds, so it takes half damage, so we round down, so it only takes one damage. Uh, the skeleton guard is going to make, is going to fail, so uh, that's a critical failure. So it takes double damage, so um, six damage will kill the skeleton guard, and also he gets pushed back 10 feet, I believe. He does, his corpse does at least, or is dead. I mean, destroyed corpse. And then the impotent skeleton guard will uh, make a fortitude save and have a regular failure because that's not 10 less than the DC. So it takes uh, three damage and gets pushed back five feet. So um, that that um, his arcane cascade was one action and gale blast was two actions. So the impotent skeleton guard uh, runs up to him again and tries to attack. He's not benefiting from shield now. And a 12 is going to miss, and Celtiel is very lucky. Um, this uh, skeleton um, makes only two attacks, and because he was pushed back, he only can make two attacks. The zombie on its turn will now try to attack Celtiel. 14 misses, and um, a 22 is a critical... That's based off of a natural 20, so that's a critical success. So it's going to do double damage, and this is very bad for Celtiel. It takes 12 damage and goes down to 1. So um, uh, Celtiel's in uh, dire straits here. He is going to try to um, hit the skeleton because it's uh, it has a higher armor class than the zombie, and then see what he can do from there. So he's going to use his staff. Oh, he's going to use that hero point that he starts a session with to re-roll that d20. And a t uh, total of 20 will deal damage and destroy the skeleton. So he has two actions left, and what he'll do is release his grip on the staff, which is actually a free action that he normally can do, and um, so that he can it turns into an agile weapon. So his uh, follow-up attack will have a bonus of 3 instead of 2. So he's now going to try to attack the zombie. And also, he, this is his plan. He thought about Spell Strike, but he wants to be able to walk away and take advantage of the zombie's slow speed um, if this doesn't work out. So an 11 will not succeed. So he will indeed uh, go back, spend 30, uh, and then the zombie Shambler is going to um, spend its whole turn walking up to him, and then he's going to try again. But now he has a fully accurate weapon. Um, so he's going to attack with the staff and then critically hit it and kill it. So uh, that ends our sample combat. So I hope that gave a good overview of the Magus. And I hope that this video accomplished its goals, which was to uh, highlight the three action economy and all the interesting choices all classes can make. But those that the Magus in particular can make 
uh, within the three action economy given its class features. Um, one thing that did not happen in the combat was um, uh, that spell strike, if it had been a critical hit, it would have been a critical hit for the spell as well. And so you can really um, have huge turns into combat um, and have these big moments if you are um, setting up for a big uh, spell strike. And uh, in some of my other videos, I highlight how you can stack bonuses. Also with weapons, unlike with spell attacks, you can use uh, potency runes, magic runes, to make the weapon strike more accurate. Um, so uh, yes, uh, Maguses um, are really uh, able to do that big offensive action, uh, big damage spell or big debuff uh, with spell strike. And it's really interesting how um, they can't do it all the time. They have to set up for it. They need to take a breath and refocus uh, or uh, cast a conflux spell, which is limited the number of conflux spells you can cast for the next spell strike. Uh, it makes uh, decision making uh, go into often the, the next turn as well, or the turn after that, in, in terms of what you're thinking about. So um, three actions often is less than what you hope you have uh, if you're the Magus. And um, the other class features, the, um, the hybrid studies, are all very different from each other and um, have a different uh, class fantasy, so to speak. Um, and the Conflux spells give big moments that lean into the theme of each hybrid study. Uh, and it's really interesting how the you, you can cast a spell and have it feed into your weapon, into your strikes, using Arcane Cascade. And there's just a lot of versatility you get uh, with Arcane Cascade uh, to be able to add a point of damage or more. It scales up. Um, of whatever type you want is very uh, powerful in 2nd edition. Uh, the way weaknesses work, uh, for example, a zombie is weak to slashing damage usually, and um, one point of slashing damage triggers the weakness and can inflict an additional 5, 10, even more damage. And, uh, and so to be able to switch on the fly more than once during a battle even, uh, based on your arcane cascade is huge. They do not have as many spell slots as full casters, as you can see from this table from the playtest document, which is still uh, applicable uh, to the final version. Uh, they uh, and so uh, you have those interesting um, you have interesting resource management. You don't uh, want to just uh, be reckless with your spell castings. Now, is that a small number of spells? Yes, uh, but it doesn't completely prevent you from casting spells, um, leveled spells throughout the day, because you can find magic items like wands, staves, um, scrolls to increase the number of spells you can cast. So, uh, in addition to those spell strikes, you can have a set of scrolls at the ready, uh, maybe cheaper scrolls that are lower level that um, are doing utility spells um, to uh, handle a whole variety of, of situations. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the overview of the Magus. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, click the like button. And uh, if you want to subscribe um, uh, and get more uh, videos about Pathfinder 2e, uh, please subscribe and comment. I um, enjoy very much reading comments and uh, responding, um, and it's what most motivates me to make more videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.